To Kill a Mockingbird, chapters 24 through 27. Chapters 24 through 26. Things are not always what they seem. The phrase, fight the good fight, comes from the Bible, specifically the book of Timothy, chapter 6, verse 12, which says, fight the good fight of the faith. When Lee says that Aunt Alexandra and her missionary circle are fighting the good fight all over the house, she's implying that the, uh, Aunt Alexandra and the women of the missionary circle are working toward the building up of God's kingdom with the work that they're doing in the house that day. In colloquial usage, the phrase means to fight a noble and well-intentioned battle. So Lee is also suggesting that the ladies of the missionary circle are working in a well-meaning and sincere manner. During the meeting of the missionary circle, Mrs. Merriweather gives a report on what she calls the squalid lives of the Marunas, who are an African tribe. The Maruna are a fictional African tribe who are non-Christians and live in squalor in Africa, but are being converted to Christianity by J. Everett Grimes, a Christian missionary whom the ladies deeply admire. The women of the missionary circle seem deeply concerned with the poverty and harsh conditions faced by the Maruna, which makes them seem like compassionate, caring, and religious people. However, while the women of the missionary circle certainly seem sympathetic to the plight of the Maruna, a far distant African tribe which faces poverty and squalor, they are far less sympathetic to the plight of the black citizens who are literally in their own backyards. Following Tom Robinson's death, the black community of Macon County has been understandably upset. However, in discussing it, Mrs. Merriweather, the lead missionary and defender of the Maruna, says to her friend, Gertrude, I tell you there's nothing more distracting than a sulky darky. Their mouths go down to here. Just ruined your day to have one of them in the kitchen. You know what I said to my Sophie, Gertrude? I said, Sophie, I said, you are simply not being a Christian today. Jesus Christ never went around grumbling and complaining, and you know it did her good. She took her eyes off that floor and said, No, Ms. Merriweather, Jesus never went around grumbling. I tell you, Gertrude, you never ought to let an opportunity go by to witness for the Lord. This attitude makes Mrs. Merriweather a hypocrite. She can extend her sympathy overseas to a group of people she will never meet, and whom, honestly, she does nothing substantial to help. But she cannot have compassion for the people who are suffering in her own backyard and to whom she could be of actual assistance. She also misuses Christian teaching. It may be that Jesus never went around grumbling and complaining, but he certainly did not go around pretending to be better than others, either. Jesus spent his life showing compassion to those in need and healing to those who were sad and sick and taught that we should treat others as we would like to be treated. It is Mrs. Merriweather who is not being a Christian here. The sad thing is that Mrs. Merriweather apparently has no idea how hypocritical she's being. Later on, we have a discussion of current events at the school. For his current event article, Cecil Jacobs relates a story about the German dictator Adolf Hitler. Cecil discusses how Hitler started a program to round up all the Jews and half-Jews too, and he wants to register them in case they might want to cause him any trouble. Of course, the reader understands that Cecil is describing the beginning of the events that will ultimately lead to the Holocaust, which is considered to be one of the worst genocides of history and certainly one of the most potent examples of the extremes of racism. Harper Lee brings up this news item here to draw parallels between the way the people in Maycomb treat black people and the way Hitler treated the Jews. Lee wants the reader to understand that any prejudice against any group, if given enough space to grow, can lead to large-scale persecution. As a response to this news item, Miss Gates tells the class, Over here we don't believe in persecuting anybody. Persecution comes from people who are prejudiced, and she is very upset about what Hitler is doing to the Jewish people. However, this stance upsets Scout. While Miss Gates is right to be mad about what is happening to the Jews in Europe, Scout is bothered by the fact that Miss Gates is prejudiced against black people. The night of the trial, Scout hears Miss Gates talking to Miss Stephanie Crawford. Miss Gates said, it's time somebody taught them a lesson. They were getting way above themselves, and the next thing they think they can do is marry us. This discrepancy in attitude bothers Scout, who believes that it's not right to persecute anybody. Essentially, Miss Gates' hypocrisy is what bothers Scout the most about this situation. 
Chapter 27, Events Are Turning Dark. That October, Bob Ewell gets a job with the Works Project Administration, or the WPA, a government program during the Depression that provided jobs to unemployed citizens in areas such as construction and road maintenance. Shortly after he gets this job, he loses it, presumably for laziness. Ewell, however, blames Atticus for losing his job. Later, someone, most likely Ewell, breaks into Judge Taylor's house. Taylor heard someone, but all he saw was a shadow. Finally, Bob Ewell has been harassing Helen Robinson as she walks to and from work. All of these events help to create an ominous, foreboding mood. It seems that Ewell isn't done with the people whom he believes ruined him during the Tom Robinson trial, and that he is slowly working his way through his enemies list. The reader should remember that he has already threatened Atticus. Lee is foreshadowing that something is going to happen to Atticus later in the book with this chain of events. The other big thing going on in this chapter are the threats to the children. Chapter 27 counterpoints two different kinds of threats for Jem and Scout. Throughout their childhood, the biggest threat Scout and Jem faced was from Boo Radley, the nearly legendary phantom of the neighborhood. However, the myth of Boo Radley really is little more than an urban legend, so this threat is an imaginary one. And as time passes, Jem and Scout lose their fear of Boo Radley, as is natural, because they're growing up they're maturing, and they're experiencing a more developed and adult view of the world. However, in Chapter 27, a very real threat emerges, and that's Bob Ewell. Ewell's grudge against Atticus makes him a very real threat to the children and their way of life. <laughs>